Today I'm going to show you how to implement Discord OAuth 2 authentication so users are able to sign in to your application with Discord. Right now I'm on the Discord developer portal. I will link this down in the description below. What we need to do is we need to register a developer application to retrieve a client ID and a client secret. So right at the top, you have a button with new application. You should click on that, name the application, whatever you want. I call this discord oauth 2 agree to the terms of service. And then as you can see, the application has been created. It's that simple. Then head over to oauth 2 in here, you have the client ID and a client secret. We can't see the client secret. We have to reset this first. If you have two-factor authentication, fill in the code, then click on submit. And as you can see, you can now see the client secret. Copy the ID first. Then you need to open your code editor. So I created a really simple COA server right here. You can go to the description down below and check out my GitHub and copy all the things that I have here. So I just use a router package for the routes and I have set up a database with connects. Don't worry, I haven't done anything complex. I just made one table with users. It has an ID, a username, a Discord ID and an avatar. Now let's move on with the application. So don't forget to copy this. Let's create a new file with .env. Let's create some variables, one for the client, one for the secret, and one from the redirect URL. So now let's copy the secret, paste that in here. Now we need to create a redirect URL. This has to redirect to your server. I'm running my app on port 4000. Then give this a route. This is going to be the callback URL. So I'm using this callback URL. I copy this, save it, and I go back to our code and paste it in here. All these variables we need to use later, so it's handy to have it in here. So let's now install all the dependencies. Yarn add axios json web token and .env. Then we start our server. We can close this down. We should require dot fair so we can use the variables that we just created so if we would do now console log process and and then discord client id we save this and we open up the terminal we can now see our client id here so that works perfectly so now let's create our login route now create a console with url now we need to generate a URL and we can do this on the Discord developer portal. So in here you see on the left tab, you see URL generator. Then we have to specify the scope. We click on identify. This is the only scope that we are using for this video, but you can use any scopes that you would like for your application. Select the URL. As you can see, it generated a URL. So we copy this, go back to our app. We paste it in here and now we are going to redirect to that URL. So I created a really simple React app with just a sign in with Discord button. So if we will click on this, it will redirect to this URL. So if you click on this, you can see it now redirects. So basically in your React app, you can just redirect to this URL, but I like to do it this way. Now we need to make a route for our callback. If you go back to our browser and we click on authorize here, you can see in the URL, you can see a code. So we need to grab this code. We can do this by creating a new const code ctx.query. And if we now put this code to a response, and if we go back to our app and we refresh this URL, we can now see the code here. I'm not going to show error handling in this video, but we would definitely need to do something like if this if ctx query a code isn't specified, we need to do like something with throw new error code not provided, something like that. With this code, we can now send a post request to the Discord API and retrieve the access token and the refresh token. Let's create a post request. Why 
I still have to import Axios. Now we have to send some data with this request, but we actually can't send the JSON because that content is not permitted and will return an error. What I'm going to do is create a new cons with params and create a new object. Add a client ID. We can grab this from our environment file. Same goes for our client secret. We have to specify a grant type. Add our code. And last, we need to add the redirect URL. We can also grab this from our environment file. I'm not sure if I call it Yuri or yeah, Yuri. Save it. Now we add this to our post request. This request is still not going to work because we have to add some headers first. So let's create a new content with headers. We need to add a content type and a encoding header. And for this encoding header, we can just copy this and save it. Now we should add this header. Now let's see if our response is working. Let's head back to our browser, go to localhost 3000, sign in with Discord, authorize, and we got an error. I forgot to add HTTPS here. Sorry, my bad. So let's go back to our app sign in with discord and authorize and as you can see we now got the access token and the refresh token so make sure you keeping this refresh token and this access token safe because this means when someone has your access token he can access basically everything in your account for this it doesn't really matter because you can only get this scope so let's say if you have all these scopes set and the permissions basically a user with your access token and refresh token can do everything so be aware for that this access token is a short lived token. This only lives for this amount of time. And with a refresh token, you can basically get a new access token. What I'm going to do next is with this access token, we can make a new request to the Discord API to retrieve the user his information, like username, avatar, or the ID. So let's create that user response. Let's not forget the HTTPS right now. We need to add a authorization header. And now we need to add the access token. We can grab this from our response data token. If you now save this and go back to our React app and sign in with Discord and authorize, we can now see the user information. We can now see the ID, the username, the avatar, and so on. Basically, what we could do next is we can save this user information into the database. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the variables from this response. I'm going to grab the ID, the username, and the avatar from the user response.data. What we can do next is check in the database if the user exists. If it exists, we can update it. If it doesn't exist, we can insert it. So now we check if the user exists. If it exists, we update it. If it doesn't exist, we insert it. Make sure you add this spread operator with headers. So we add the previous headers here. Otherwise, this will not work. So let's see if this works. If we go back to our React Hub, we sign in. So if we now go to our database and we refresh it, we can see that this has been inserted. So now let's change this username to something random. And if we now try to log in again, 
and we refresh it, we can see it updated the username. Now I'm going to show you how to implement GWT tokens. After a user is inserted in the database, we want to set a token as a cookie. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to import the sign function from JSON web token. This function we need in order to sign a token. I'm going to create a new console with token. And then we do await sign. Basically don't store sensitive data in here. I'm going to show you later why. So what I'm going to do is store the user ID in here. Then we have to specify a secret. So I'm going to create a new variable with GWT secret. And then I'm going to add super secret here. Don't share this secret with someone else because this is really sensitive. So let's now add the secret here. And then we have to, when the token expires, for this video I do seven days. Usually you want tokens to be short living, so <laughs> this is not short, but for this video it doesn't really matter. Now we need to set this token into a cookie so we can later retrieve it. So we do ctxcookies.set, we call this token, and we specify the token. And when the cookie is set, so basically what we have to do next is redirect to the client. So we can specify a URL in here, but I'm going to create a new variable with client direct URL. And I'm going to type in the URL, then copy this, save it, and then we paste it in here and then save this as well. And now if we head to our app, the expected behavior should be we sign in with Discord. Then we have to authorize Discord. Then it checks if the user exists in the database. If it does, it updates it. If it doesn't, it inserts it. And then it signs a token with the Discord ID. And then after the token is signed, it sets a cookie. So let's test this. And when the cookie is set, it should redirect back to the client. So it looks like it all worked. So what we can do now is we can go to our cookies and we see that our cookie is set here. And as I mentioned, if we copy our cookie, don't put any sensitive data in your GWT token because you can easily encrypt a GWT token. So if we just copy it here, we can easily see our data that's in that's stored in our JWT token. So let's say if we would um, put something that's related to, for example, money, <laughs> everyone with the token can just see what is in that token. So what we can do now is create a middleware. And we create a function with authenticate.js. We export a function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also create a new file for the database. So I'm going to copy this in here and then delete those two lines, copy this from here and then just import the database from here. Save it. Now let's move back to our authenticate function. Let's import the database here because we want to retrieve the data from the user. And let's add verify from the JSON, JSON web token library. Now we can grab the token what we can do now is grab the token by creating a new const with token. We can do ctx cookies get token. Let's do a wait next so it moves on with the function. So now we can console log this token and see if it works. This is the token that we just set. In here we have to import this authenticate function. And we can now do router use authenticate. So basically what this does, every time when someone hits the router, then it's going to fire this function. So basically what this function now does is it checks for a token and then logs it and then it goes next to the, the router that the user hits. Let's see if this works. We create a new endpoint with test. 
we can check this by going to localhost 4000 and we type in test and we fire this function we can now see the token so if we now head back to our authenticate function what we can do now is we can try we can create a try and catch here in here we can verify the token so we grab the sub from the token because that is what we added into the token so we do await verify token and then we have to specify the secret we can see if we can retrieve this let's see if we can actually grab verify this token so we hit this again and as you see, we retrieve the ID here. What we can do now is add the user to the user state. So we do ctx state of the user. So await db users where discord ID is equal to sub. And then we have to grab the first user. Otherwise it's gonna return an array and that's gonna give us an error. If we can't verify this token, it basically goes to this catch. So what we can do now is ctx state user is nil. This way we know when a user isn't logged in, the state is nil. And when the user is logged in and the token has been set, the state of the user is the user in the database. Voila, let's see if this works. If we now hit this endpoint, we can see it works perfectly. We can see the ID of the user, we can see the username, the Discord ID, and the avatar. To share the cookie between the, between the client and the server on localhost, we first have to go back to our index file. We have to put credentials to true here. And now we can close our server because we're not going to use this anymore. And then if we head to our app, JS in the client. For the client, we are going to add Axios as well. Now we start to we hide this. We can now import Axios from Axios. And we should add use state and use effect from React. And what we can do now is we can create a state user, set user, and then use state nil. Now we create a async function with get me. And then we do, now we create a get request. That's hitting our endpoint. And what we can do now is set the user. And then we do a use effect. And in here we fire the function get me. And what we can do here is we can do something like, or else we do a span with not logged in. I forgot to add the credentials. So now we can see we logged in with our username. So this was basically the tutorial on how to implement Discord OAuth 2 into your application. I hope this was very helpful. If it was, please make sure to drop a subscribe and a like. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them down in the comments below. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And I wish you a beautiful day.